Let's roll the clocks back to December 1997. I'm seven years old, the holiday season is in full swing, the snow is falling. I'm sitting in the living room of my aunt and uncle's house with my cousins, keeping warm next to a radiator and the soft glow of a CRT. My uncle's about to sit down for the very first time and boot up Duke Nukem 64. This was the beginning of something much bigger for me. I already had been playing games, I got to experience all of the adventure stuff, all of the RPGs, the platformers with my mom, and when I was at my cousin's house, I got to experience uh, more party-focused stuff, you know, Mario Kart, Mario Party, but also a lot of shooters, a lot of action-oriented experiences because my uncle was massively into them. Duke Nukem 64 would be one of the first times that I would really play a game of this nature, a game that not only had this really solid, immersive 2.5D first person perspective, but a game that really stressed to me at a young age what a game could offer when it focused so heavily on its level design, its and its replayability, and its core gameplay loops. Because that's what Duke Nukem was all about, ammo management, health management, and discovery. Really giving you the ability to replay a level 20, 30, 40 times over to find all of the secrets and then sharing those secrets at a point in time when there was no internet really with the people around you. So my cousins and I would sit down, we'd all have our sort of play session. One of us would stay up really late Saturday night while everybody else was sleeping and find a bunch of secrets and then share those secrets the next day. We're constantly trading secrets, you know, we would discover together, oh, hey, look, you can kick over this fire hydrant and then drink the water for HP. Oh, dude, by the way, you can also do that with the toilet. Hey, and check out, you can get a grenade launcher at the start of the first level if you go over here. You know, it's just this wonderful shared single-player experience that existed in a way that nothing had existed before for me personally. Therefore, I grew a pretty heavy attachment to the build engine, and I would go on to play Blood in, in Shadow Warrior. And that engine specifically, I think for a lot of people, became kind of nostalgic, kind of memorable, right? It, uh... It brings about certain emotions, certain feelings when you see a game in the build engine. So imagine my surprise when I found out that 3D Realms, of Duke Nukem of course, was going to be publishing a game by a developer called Voidpoint in the build engine in 2018. That game, as it released in February of this year for $20 in early access on Steam, is called Ion Maiden. Ion Maiden is a build engine, first person shooter in the vein of games like Duke Nukem, Shadow Warrior, and Blood. And it is freaking incredible. You take on Shelly Bombshell Harrison, a ex Global Defense Force bomb disposal expert who is now fighting the evil transhumanist mastermind Dr. Jadis Heskel as he unleashes the members of his cybernetic cult onto the streets of Neo DC. And I love the tagline on the Steam page, Shelly knows it's time to start chucking bombs rather than defusing them. She also wields a massive double barrel revolver called Loverboy and a plethora of other incredible weapons. This is a game that I think fully demonstrates alongside of games like a medieval and dusk that old engines, traditional FPS game design, kicked ass back in the 90s, not just because it was kick ass in the 90s, but because it's kick ass period. And I think the build engine in particular looks incredible from a design from aesthetics perspective here in 2018. I love seeing these traditional games in the modern era. And I know so many people are like turned off by them, but you just don't know what you're missing, man. I mean, this is raw, traditional first person game design in the modern era, on modern hardware, running beautifully, and giving you a taste of the focus that these games had back in the 90s, like what was important to a game like this. And it's a lot of the same, I guess you could say the same ideologies, but the way it's executed just comes across is so much more pure. And that was what I kept getting while I was playing Ion Maiden. It didn't just feel like a nostalgia trip. I was worried it would because I've played other games and it's just like, oh, well, I'm bored of them. But much like A Medieval in Dusk, this comes across as a full-blown, original, and unique experience just running on old tech. And it's incredible because of that. And it's a reminder that this stuff works in 2018. You know, it's not about the nostalgia. In fact, nostalgia, while I was playing Ion Maiden, quickly wore off. 
you know, the perspective, the 2.5D, that was like, oh, it's like Duke Nukem. But the moment I really got into it and started moving and strafing and, you know, having full mouse control as someone who played Duke Nukem on the N64, he didn't really have that. Uh, I just found myself playing a new game. Like, because that's what it is. It's a new experience, just running an old tech. And I was blown away. And I was instantly intoxicated by it. I just, I couldn't wait to get more. I ended up playing through the entire preview campaign, which is three levels. Uh, you have three different difficulties you can choose. I played through it twice already, and now I'm going back to find all the secrets. You know, and this game really does execute on all of those core design ideologies. So great level design with multiple paths, uh, a lot of trick jumping you can do to get to certain um, pickups, certain weapons, certain ammo drops. And then again, just a boatload of secrets. I think the first level alone has 19 secrets. I found four so far. Uh, one of the levels I think has 22. There's just so much to discover here. It's 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 all the things I loved about those old build engine games in 2018. Great one-liners, a great character, new weapons to mess around with, uh, and it is not even finished yet. So you have the three levels with an end boss, and if you pick the game up right now on Steam, you'll get access to all of that for 20 bucks, and then you'll get access to everything else they develop as the game is still in development. It's not often that I would say a game with maybe an hour of actual like straight play time and then maybe another two hours of like discovery and replayability is, is worth twenty dollars but ion maiden absolutely is and that's kind of why i wanted to talk about it today i wanted to like stress i think just how much i've been enjoying this game and how much i think it is worth your time and money i mean if you grew up with build engine games specifically you're gonna be you're gonna be instantly intoxicated in this you're gonna find yourself just indulging in this experience because that's what it became indulgence for me i was just like this doesn't deserve I don't deserve to play something that's so pure, that is so filled with nostalgia, but but not. <laughs> like, I don't even know how to talk about it. It's the same way I feel about Dusk and a Medieval, and I need to talk a lot more about those games at some point. I've been putting it off because it's so hard to put my feelings, my emotions on onto paper, like actually make words of them, because they should just be nostalgia trips. They should just be indulgence in the sake of nostalgia but they're not they're indulgence on a whole new level because they transcend that concept of nostalgia and they just they just become something new again in old tech all of the old ideas but just new and it just works you know and i think this is a good example of why doom 2016 works so well and why wolfenstein works so well while those games are obviously more modern in their design they have these traditional ideologies about how the player should be able to explore the level and complete objectives and those ideologies you know go back to games like the build engine and wolfenstein in classic doom and stuff like that so i think it demonstrates that those design decisions still work even now in 2018 people have just kind of forgotten about them and we've gone different routes you know we've gone down the realm of full sandbox or full linear or wide linear when all along games like this games like iron maiden now and games like duke nukem were doing linear sandboxes you know they were doing that sense of exploration and replayability this just executes on all those things so flawlessly and there's lots of beautiful secrets in here as well you'll find uh little um flashbacks to games like shadow warrior throughout the level and there's a really great sense of a world here you know in a traditional sense though, I think modern games, right? They execute so well on their world design that you just feel like you're a part of a larger world. Old games tended to feel like you were transitioning from one stage to the next and you always looked forward to the next stage, the next environment. I Am Maiden has a bit of both actually. You know, it, it's world in the preview campaign is all focused on the streets of Neo DOC, but you also got into the subway. So you have this like, you know, this section of the world where you're in the subway and you're like, oh, this is like a new environment. I'm excited to be here. Okay, new place, dealing with enemies, different architecture, different geometry. Um, you're in the skyscrapers of some of the office corporate corporate buildings. And then you're back out in the streets of DC for the boss fight. And it just, it transitions really well while always reminding the player that this is part of one world. So while you are going across multiple levels, the way it loads and the way it has the player transition is more modern uh, than it is retro and it just creates a really unique vibe a really unique feeling for looking forward to the next level the next environment and you know the prospect of new weaponry new enemies etc etc yeah i'm excited for more of ion maiden um this is a game that just instantly exploded onto my hype radar and was like wow man now that i played this yeah i want more like if you ask me about games i'm looking forward to in the next year Iron Maiden's the top of that list now. It's it's right up there with Cyberpunk and Anthem because just damn, this is good stuff. 
Again, guys, it is $20 on Steam currently right now in early access. That's going to get you access to everything else the team makes for the game in the coming uh, year. It's got three difficulties, three levels across this preview campaign, and a crap load of replayability. Like, there is so much here. Yeah, it might take you just under an hour to complete the game on normal difficulty, but you can go back, play it on the harder difficulty, deal with the ammo, the health management, and more importantly, find all of those hidden secrets because there are so many of them. This is a game that encourages you to 100% it, and I love it so much for that. Feel free to leave your thoughts and any other questions you have for me down in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. You have been brought here for a purpose, the most important task of your lives. <laughs>